the Lord led Ezekiel all around. And there were dry bones everywhere. And those dry bones represented all that was left of the past glory of God's people. You see, they were now living in exile. And in their camps and in their tents and in their shacks or whatever, around fires at night, there would have been talk about how things used to be. They would have remembered the homes that they used to have, their way of life their foods, their music, their celebrations, and their God, now they feel cut off completely, dried up, and without hope. The bones that Ezekiel sees are all that are left of their glory days. Now, they should have seen this coming. The prophet Jeremiah warned them. He said, at that time, says the Lord, the bones of the king of Judah and the bones of it officials and the bones of the priest and the bones of the prophets and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be brought out of the tombs and they'll be spread out before the sun and the moon and the host of heaven which they've loved and served and which they followed and which they've inquired of and worshipped and they shall not be gathered or buried but shall be like dung on the surface of the ground. Jeremiah told them it was coming. Once upon a time, they had princes, a temple, riches, fields, vineyards, homes, respect, laughter, and God. They had God, but now it's just all dried bones and memories. These days, a number of us know what that feels like. We remember when things were better, when relationships were fresh and euphoric. We remember when we were surrounded by loved ones, when they were in and out of the house and that screen door slammed all day long. We remember the plans and the dreams that we had for ourselves and for others and for our children. We remember when there was money left over. We remember. And it's gone now. Today, many of us know exactly how it is to stand among dry bones. But God did not grab Ezekiel and put him out there for some sanctified pity party or so that you and I could open our Bible today and say, hey, back then people knew how I feel. Isn't that cool? God's purpose, and God had a purpose, was to show who God is that we might believe. God is the one who restores, not because of our righteousness, but because in the restoration, God is glorified to take a human, an individual, or a whole group, a church even, and restore them to righteousness. That glorifies God. To take a country and put it again on the straight and narrow, that glorifies God. And out there in this valley of dry bones, God says, this is who I am, the one who gives life. Believe it. Out there in all those dry bones, God says to Ezekiel, can these bones live? Ezekiel gave one of the greatest answers of all scripture. He said, O oh Lord, you know, or, oh God, thou knowest. It's wonderful. Think about it. At first, when you hear it, you think, what an obsequious thing to say. Or, what a sniveling little sycophant. But if you think about it, what else could he say? If he had said yes, it would have been outrageous presumption. So, Ezekiel, you know God's plans, do you now? If he had said no, it would have been craven disbelief. Oh, so you don't think God can? Hmm. So he said, oh God, you know. It was the best answer. As somebody has written about it, it was a noble utterance of faith and submission. Can these bones live? 
know that. They can live, for there is movement. There's rattling. There's that peculiar, dry, airy sound of bone on bone. And then sinews slip and slurp, and they come onto the bones and bind them together, and flesh comes upon them, and like statues they are there. Call wind, says God. Breath upon them demands God. Let there be breath. And so Ezekiel calls forth breath, and there is life. Standing before him, a vast multitude, an army of living people that recall glory that was and is to come. The people needed the promise, the hope that was revealed in these that were standing there. They needed to hear that they would not suffer the indignities and the trials of living in exile forever. They needed to know that they were not forgotten. And out there on this valley of dry bones, God says, I'm going to give you life. You're not forgotten. Oh, my people, God said. Twice an endearment. Oh, my people, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. We'll celebrate that spirit coming upon us at Pentecost. But it's a good and needed word for today when many of us are standing in our own valleys of dry bones remembering what used to be. The dry bones of our glory days haunt us. And they're not femurs or ulmas or clavicles or metatarsals or anything like that. Our bones have other names. These dried bones of our lives of loneliness illness, of layoffs and recession, of death and testing, of words that we should not have said and we wish with all our heart we could take back, the dry bones of relationships that have ended, of dreams that we can no longer aspire to, of rejection of plans that we have put away, the dry bones of our failures and our regrets, we have stood in the valley. And we may have to stay here a while. I don't presume to know God's timetable, but I fully expect that we shall be restored Maybe this year, maybe next year, maybe in heaven, but God said God would restore God's people. And he didn't say how he would do it or what it would look like. God may not put everything in our lives back like it used to be, but God, with God, there will come a time whenever we look around and again we can say this is good about our lives. In just two weeks we're going to celebrate Easter. And we're going to come in here and sing about Christ the Lord is risen today and we're going to have a great time. It's going to be a wonderful day. And once again, right around Easter, we will hear of Joseph of Arimathea and how he gave his own tomb that Jesus would have a place to be buried. And we will hear of Mary Magdalene and the other women as they crept to the tomb in the half light of morning bringing spices and perfumes to anoint Christ's body. And again, we will we'll think about them. And what did they talk about on their way to the tomb that morning? Like the other disciples, those women may have expected something different from Jesus. Maybe they expected a new kingdom, a new Israel. Maybe they expected new status or recognition, for surely Jesus treated them di very well and differently. Jesus acted as if they mattered. Listening to Jesus, they had developed dreams and expectations. But now the only service remaining was to place with his body the traditional spices and perfumes. The Matthew Bible study we've been using says, Watch well these women and Joseph of Arimathea. Their dreams may have been crushed, but their love and devotion were as great as ever. 
Our dreams may have been crushed. Our hopes, and here we are in all these dry bones. But these women and Joseph show us how to live when everything has fallen down and gone away. They show us to hold on to our Savior, to remain devoted, to trust in something better, a restoration on some tomorrow. I've seen people live this and heard their stories. And one that I always liked, a testimony of faith, was from Christmas of 1947, when times were hard and jobs were scarce, but this couple married young. They barely had anything to their names. They, they, with the night that they got married, they had such big dreams, they ran away and drove to Bennettsville and, and were married there, and, and it, they were going to do great things and have a wonderful life, but a year later they had a baby and they had bills and, and they had worries, but it was Christmas. And, and there were trees to be had if you would get up and go out in the forest and cut your own tree down and drag it to the house. But there was no money for ornaments. There were other things that were needed. So they washed the little cans that snuff came in. Do you remember snuff? They got their neighbors to save their snuff cans, and they washed them out and used wire cutters and cut them into shapes and stars, and they hung them on the tree. They didn't have a dime, they just had snuff cans and hope. And those shiny cans twinkled in the kerosene light. And it announced to the world, times are rough, but Jesus was still born in Bethlehem. Times are hard, but we still have a Savior. Out here in our valleys of dry bones, times are tough, but we have a Savior. A Savior that God loves us so much that even in the valley of dry bones, our dry bones, God is willing to send a Savior to hold our hands and wait and lead us into our restoration. We have a Savior, my friends, and our Savior has us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.